the renovation of defunct Shuri Garrison and the housing development and landscaping of adjacent Gunners Park has now opened up this area for sea fishing. We're talking about the area between Shuri Common and East Beach. The map shows its location at the mouth of the Thames Estuary. This is the eastern part of South End at Shoebury Ness, where I'm fishing faces southeast, so you don't have the same tidal pool as you do for the main beaches along South End Seafront. I'll cover Gunners Park and East Beach in other videos, but here I'm fishing the Boathouse section, which is part of what some locals refer to as the concrete. This area has received a little bit of attention this summer, since together with Shoebury Common and Foot Bay, it has thrown up a few smooth hounds. And to my knowledge, that's the first time that's happened since I've been living in Southend. I've not fished for them yet, and this is a record of two short daytime sessions, one in June and one in November. The first session coincides with a small deep tide, and I can fish it from the beach beneath the sea wall. I'm using my 15-foot Gravel Technos Dewey's with Penafinity 7000 reels and £20 braid. I'm using a long snood flapper rig with pop-up beads and a three-hook clip-down rig for fishing further out. The water here is shallow, and today it's crystal clear. I've been looking over this area for a while and not much has been caught when I've been down here so my hopes aren't that high. Waders help to get a little bit of extra distance but on the bigger tides you won't be fishing off a beach you'll be fishing off a sea wall. And that's what makes the boathouse particularly popular because you can fish with your rods leaning up against the railings. Since I'm using plain leads and the current will move your rigs around, I'm making sure that my distance rig is being cast nowhere near where the other one has gone out. I'm fishing with locally dug lugworm and I'm keeping the rods low and tightening up the line as soon as I've cast out. From spring to early autumn you can expect to get through quite a bit of bait since crab activity is likely to be quite high. I normally prefer to use ragworm which lasts a little bit longer but I haven't managed to obtain any. I'm expecting to catch small bass and there's an outside chance of catching a flounder and maybe even a small smooth hound but they're more likely to show at night. No one I've seen fishing down here has caught more than a couple of small fish and quite a lot of people have blanked. Having said that there have been a lot more people on the beach and in the water this summer so with the clear water that disturbance hasn't really helped. Having got my excuses out of the way I'll get my first bite and I miss that. And, as expected, the bait's been chewed by crabs. I'm clipping down the short snood rig to get extra distance, but the flapper rig has only been cast a little bit beyond what I think is the end of that groin.
as for high crab population, it is worth dragging your rigs now and again. I'll get my first bite on the flapper rig, but I miss it. That's better. This time I do connect with a bite on the flapper rig. It's a small scully bass on the bottom snud and that's about average size for the fish here. The tide has started to ebb and I'm now picking up more bites and that seems to be normal for me. I hardly ever catch on the flooding tide at South End I normally just turn up about an hour before the top of the tide and fish it down. Not a particularly good session. I ended up with four little bass and a couple fell off on the way in and a fairly good fish got free as I was trying to set up the cameras to film it. Another spur of a moment session in mid-November. There were three other anglers already fishing the boathouse when I got here but none of them had had a bite. It had been windy and raining in the morning but I fancied the look of it since the wind had died down and so had the rain. But more important than that, the water is coloured and I fancy my chance of getting a few whiting. I find that you normally have to fish at night at South End to get these. I've recently rediscovered the value of using Sheppy rigs, so I've started with a short snud Sheppy rig for fishing at long distance. Another free hook version, but with longer snuds, would be used for fishing closer in. I'll also have a fixed snud rig on standby, that's in case I need to clip down to cast beyond where I can get the Sheppy rig. I've arrived half an hour before high tide, and as you can see, it's a much bigger tide than before, so I've had to set up on top of the sea wall. I'm not sure if the water will come up to where I'm standing, but if it does, I've still got space above me I can relocate to. This time I'm using my Colmic 07 rods and it's time to set the second one up. The reels and line are the same as before.
By my feet are a selection of plain leads that I can choose or swap between. I've got a pyramid lead, a star lead and a flat lead. The one I go for will depend on the strength of a tidal pull. I'm using locally dug lugworm again, but I have got some dingy blacks. I've also brought some squid, but it's not likely I'm going to be using that. I like to fish here, giving myself a chance to catch a flatfish, so I'm just sticking with worm baits. The Sheppy rig that's on this flat winder has snoods which are about 3 foot long and made of 10 pound red Maxima. The hooks are mustard size 3 Nordic bends. There's no point in going any stronger as I'm not expecting any big fish. This bag contains my dingy blacks, which have been left over from another session. I've opted for a flat lead, so I'm only going to be casting towards the end of the groins, and I'm not expecting there to be much tidal pull there. The weather's started to clear up nicely, but there's still the odd shower. I've not had a bite yet, and I'm twitching and dragging my baits as usual. I've also got my spare rig already baited up and hanging from a tripod. The water now has started to come onto the seawall, so I've placed most of my gear higher up. Time to move the bucket seat, as I don't want that to be washed away. The cushion and backrest detaches which is very useful if you're going to have to sit on a seawall.
don't need to move my tripod, but the butts of my rods are now placed on the higher part of the wall. This is still very comfortable fishing, although casting a long way is a bit of a problem. The steep grass bank behind impedes your cast, so sometimes I'm having to get up onto the bank and cast from there. My first bite comes at range, right at the top of the tide. And it is a whiting, a fairly decent size. I know it's rather difficult to get excited over whiting, but when you generally only catch schoolies on these marks, the whiting makes a pleasant change. And that's one caught closer in. And there's a bite, so I'm dragging the rig.
true to form, bites pick up as it starts to ebb. And there's a little schooly. So these little bass are still around in November. It looks like this one thinks it's 42 centimetres and wants to be taken home. I do hope you don't think I was trying to sneak that into my cool bag when no one was looking. Plenty of bites now, as the sun is low in the sky and the tide is receding properly. I'm now swapping over to the clip down rig. This one's got a pyramid lead, so I'll be casting further and there's a bit more tidal pull there. To get the extra swing needed for the distance cast, I need to get up onto that grassy bank. While waiting for a bite, I'll rebate that short snud Sheppy rig. I just spotted that bite in time. A 
another fish on closer in. And it's a slightly better sized scorny bass this time. It's all action now, but that fish came off. I've pretty much run out of fresh lug, so the dangerous blacks will have to do. My last remaining worm tails are going onto the longer snud rig. More bites seem to be missed on a clip down rig than a Sheppy rig.
is now turning into a really pleasant evening with plenty of action. Back to the short snood Sheppy rig that I'd baited up earlier. Since I'm running out of bait and daylight, this will be one of my last few casts. Well, I'm really glad I came back to this spot. 19 whiting and two scorny bass. For a fairly short session at Shoebury Garrison, I'm pretty pleased with that. 